You may have heard that Fine Vintage is an incredibly overpowered augment, but then when you try it out yourself, you go 8th. Maybe you think you went 8th because you didn't get any ZZ Rods, but what if I told you the reason why is because you actually don't know how to play it. So in this video, I'm going to cover all the basics, whether you've never played Fine Vintage before or if you tried it and kind of failed with it. And even if you played it and done well with it, I got some tricks and tips for you as well. I've been watching a lot of players use Fine Vintage poorly, and I'm honestly sick of seeing it happen. So I'm going to go over step by step how to use this augment to great effect, as well as showing it in action. So first, I'm going to go to my favorite team builder, teamfight.lol, type in all the heavenly units, add them in like this. And then we want to go over to support items. So for support items, I like putting all the Aegises of the Legion on my Nico, just like that. And then for the Randuins, you put it on Kiana. It doesn't really matter who that much, but I like setting it up like this, put three on her. And then ZZ Rods, just spread them out on whoever can kind of handle them. So obviously Soraka in the back, Wukong, you want to get buffed. And then for the other units, you need some sort of Morello applier. So that could either be Morgana or Aurelia. Aurelia is obviously better, but more difficult to get. You'd want her to be buffed up if you have her. And then you want to add in some Dragon Lord. So Rakan, very nice. Always keep in mind you want Rakan in the top two rows. That way it doesn't turn into a Zaya, which is useless. And then either Lee Sin or Diana, both very good because they give Duelist for Aurelia from Lee Sin or you get more Sage from Diana, very welcome there. So now what about the ZZ Rods? Well, let's add some of them. One ZZ Rod on you, let's say one ZZ Rod on Kha'Zix. And then let's not forget the Morella Namicon or the red buff on Aurelia and Morgana. So we could do something like this. And keep in mind, you only need like two items on these units and they could also use either version of the item. So you could do Aurelia with red buff or Morella plus like a Giant Slayer or a Hextech Gunblade. Same thing with Morgana, maybe add a Shoujin on her and make her apply it faster. And then sometimes you have so many support items that you get like a Black Cleaver. You could just put that on whoever your main damage dealer is and then needlessly big gem i like putting on soraka the other ones i don't really like too much worst case you get like a zephyr or a shroud of stillness and you're gonna be good from there but you want the void spawns to get buffed up so i like doing it like this putting them in the back getting wukong and rakan in the front you don't care about kha'zix kha'zix could be in like no man's land or like narnia as people like to say and then this is pretty much the build you will not lose and you could also center if you want you don't have to be on the side it's very flexible because it's a very forgiving comp this is going to be the main go-to comp if you don't have wukong that's fine too sometimes i run the comp without kha'zix because i can't find him but i'd say this is what you should be aiming for so what happens if you don't get any zz rots at all well it's a very simple solution. What you can do is just go this build plus a Yone. And then the funny thing about Yone is that he does not need any of his regular items when you do this. Like obviously you still prefer to have like a Titan's Titan's Bloodthirster on him, right? Like don't get me wrong about that. Essentially, what does Titan's do? It gives you 50 AD and AP and 20 armor and magic resist. What does this do? It gives you 15 armor and magic resist and 25% attack speed. So it's a little weaker, but you have like three of them pop in, right? He essentially gets a tankiness from the Titans at the start of the round instead of at the end of the round. He gets a bunch of attack speed and then Randuins. This gives 30 armor and MR. Of course, you could still build some items on him, but you don't really need the Titans. Just get a Bloodthirster on him or like some healing item and then focus on your support items like you see here. Another thing you could do is go for Duelist instead of Yone. So you could just go for like a Volibear build with the Tristana and the build honestly works very similarly because you're playing like a lot of Duelists anyways. You have Aurelia, Tristana, Volibear, Kiana. So you pretty much could already reach four or six Duelists, but... You have the added bonus of you can do the locket build. Duelists are very powerful with lockets, so if you get really unlucky with your items and you're forced to build other support items such as like the Zeeks, then you could play something like that. But I much prefer the Zizirot version with like Aegis plus Randuins. You just stabilize so hard in the early game and you save a ton of health that way. By the way, the reason why I like the Aegis plus Randuins build a lot more than Locket and Zeeks is because you just buff up so many more units. I'm buffing up like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units with the Aegis. And then the Randuins is buffing up seven. That's a lot more than the five you get from Locket and the Zeeks. There are a lot more viable builds with this augment, but these are just some of the main ones that people are having a lot of success with. But let's get back into the game replay. So I already know what a lot of players are thinking. They're going to be saying something like, hey, I already knew to play all the heavenly units. I already knew to put an anti-heal in my comp. I already knew that Aurelia's OP. And I already knew that the Randuin's Aegis build is a lot better than the Locket Zeke build. You are missing one crucial part, and that is you need to survive until the late game. And this augment is very difficult to do that with. So you only want to pick this in poor portals or encounters which give you a lot of econ such as the one we're playing right now this darius encounter gives us a ton of free gold throughout the game 
And that's gonna help us reach level eight, level nine to do a big roll down and hopefully hit Aurelia or Hoi, which is definitely a game saver for this build. So one thing that's very important about this comp is that two star units are super duper 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 important, more so than any other comp in the game because the early game and mid game is just that important because a lot of times people just die and bleed out with fine vintage as we saw in the stats before. How do you avoid that? Well, obviously it's gonna be through having a bunch of two stars and luckily for you, the two stars you get, I found don't matter. I've had the most random BS two stars with no synergies, but they were two star and that was enough to carry my team treat them as if they were ZZ Rot portals. That's the trick. Like, you might be wondering like, hey, I don't have any ZZ Rot portals. Wah, 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 let me complain about the game. But the random two star units you have are essentially ZZ Rot portals in the early to mid game. So we get those two stars right here. We get Caitlyn and we also have the Yasuo, like no synergies, I don't care. I'm gonna put them in. And one thing to note, uh, there are different variations where you could play Story Weaver, which we actually will try out today. But one note on Story Weaver is that you probably want red Story Weaver because you want the attack speed, you don't really care about the ability power that much, but I chose the Story Weaver back in stage one before I even knew I had this augment. In case I have not mentioned it already, the reason why it's so hard to kind of survive with this comp and oftentimes people die during stage four is because you're not using items half the time. Another thing to consider is that you need a pretty big economy to reach level eight or level nine to hit the exact units that you want. So there's a big balancing act between full lose streaking and go on win-lose, win-lose to preserve health. And I'd much rather have the win-lose, win-lose because I'm supposed to get all my econ from the portals or the encounters that are happening in this exact game. So we're actually gonna 100 health all the way into this first carousel and that is going to be perfect. By the way, on these carousels, you have two goals. One is to get as much gold as possible by taking the highest cost unit because the item doesn't matter. And two is griefing other players. So you see that bow on a Felios on a three cost or the sword on a bard? That's ideally what you want to take. Unfortunately, right now we're last pick. We don't get that many options here, but I'm going to go for as much gold as possible. I'm going to just try to steal that from him, but unfortunately it's closer to that other player. So we just get the gold. So here's another random two star that doesn't really fit with my team. I don't care. I'm going to buy it. Uh, I'm also going to level up to play it. And let's see what our first support item is. I want the Aegis. Aegis is so important. I think it's the best item. It's better than ZZ Rob, but we don't get any right now. Out of all these four options, I think Needlessly Big Gem's the best. Obsidian Cleaver, you can kind of make a case for it, but definitely don't care about Virtue. Definitely don't care about Banshee's Veil. And then don't forget to build the items. I like doing it from a unit I buy from the shop and then sell right away, just in case I accidentally sell someone that I actually want to use. I have done that before by accident. Uh, but yeah, you want the timer to start ticking as soon as possible. This is going to be ready for us after stage 3-1 because it only counts combat rounds. So we're against a Story Weaver person. Probably going to lose this one, even though we have a bunch of two stars. We don't have the best synergies out there. And again, we don't have items. We have this needlessly big gem, which activated when our team already lost. So we're essentially down an item. It's okay, though. We did lose our streak. Uh, obviously, I'm not happy about it, you know, but... It's not the biggest deal because we cannot expect to win streak with this comp. Getting three wins already is already, uh, I would say, very fortunate. So even though I believe we do end up winning this very last round, uh, not having a streak, not the end of the world. Again, our econ is from the portal. Nothing else really matters. A gold subscription is probably even better for this. Uh, what does that one give? It gives like a random amount of gold every single stage. That one is completely bonkers. Scuttle Puddle, same thing. Scuttle Puddle is probably even better because you get a bunch of item components. But here we get a bunch of items, a little bit of gold, doesn't really matter. There used to be an APM check where you had to build the item really quickly, sell the unit, and then you get an extra turn of fine vintage, but they removed that interaction, which is pretty nice. We end up getting demolished in this round, but it's okay. We're going to get one of our fine vintage items, and we're going to see our augment. We want item augments as per usual, or like a heavenly crest. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure if branching out counts as one of the items. Like, I'm trying to read it. The only spatula item I've ever made was heavenly crest when I played this comp, so... I've never had the need to recraft it. I'm pretty sure it works, but someone please confirm in the comments. I'm like 69% sure that it works. Now we pop it, we get an Aegis. I consider that a GG. We do not need the ZZ Rot. A lot of people cry about not having ZZ Rots, but if you get Aegises and Randuins, that's, I'd argue it's even better. But I went with the safe option item grab bag because like I'm not risking my game on like testing something, but someone please let us know in the comments so we all know for the future. We are going to be do we win this one? I think we actually lose this one. It's gonna be a very close fight. No, we actually, 
we actually will win. That's very nice. We're going to be 83 health going into stage 3-3. We have a bunch of items cooking. Not the best economy, but not the worst either. The reason why our gold's low, even though we're on a econ portal, is because we've had to buy a lot of units in our shops. So we've been fortunate to get a lot of upgrades. And I'm actually like happy that we're kind of low gold because the reason why is pretty nice. It looks like we're going to be losing this round. This one's pretty close as well. We do get the needlessly big gem pot, but I think... Never mind, we, we do win this. We're against another, oh, the fine vintage player. He went with keepers and has fine vintage, but got some ZZ rots. You'll see that the ZZ rots, again, don't really matter that much. We both get a nice little three turn age item right there. So we're gonna pop it after the carousel. What do we want here? We wanna be griefing. Unfortunately, this one is filled with two costs, two stars. I opt to go for the Shen, uh, just because I think we could use some behemoths. But honestly, it doesn't really matter too much. All right, let's see the support item. Also, let's build another thing. Sell the Zyra. All right, we do get a ZZ Rot. Very nice. But honestly, no one's going to believe me. I think I would have preferred another Aegis here. I think Aegis is just the best item. In the fine vintage comp, the anti-heal that you get from like a Morello Namicon or a red buff is what really wins the game. And having the Aegis kind of make your team incredibly tanky. It allows you to get the needlessly big gem cooking, and it also lets you burn people for longer time because your team just never dies. Uh, so that's why I like it more than the ZZ Rot because they nerf ZZ Rot. It's not going to be the attack damage monster that it was before. It's still good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not mad about the ZZ Rot, but I just want to say that it's like not the best thing in the world. I'd much rather have like three Randuins, three Aegis of the Legions, than these ZZ Rots right now. ZZ Rots are still good in the late game, obviously, but like I want to play for the now because I just don't want to die. I've actually had plenty of games where I, well, not plenty. I've had one game where I actually got like four ZZ Rots in my first portal pops and I tried it. It was actually completely garbage because you need something buffing up your team, such as like the Randuins or the Aegis with the resistances because it's just that, that, that important. Maybe it works with Locket if you actually just have like so many ZZ Rots, but I'm pretty sure the other items are better. You get a lot more value out of them because they just hit your entire team instead of five units. Also, if you haven't already, very important to set up the team planner. It kind of looks like this as the main core. Obviously, you could play any legendary, any red buff applier works well. You could use like Morgana as a red buff applier before you get Aurelia. You could use Hui if you get Hui randomly. Uh, who else can use it? There are a couple of other users, but um, one other thing, you want to be thinking about getting anti-heal sometime soon. But I'm thinking we're going to lose a couple of rounds, so we'll have a decent pick on Carousel. Maybe we could get a bow or a belt, uh, hopefully build a Morello or a red buff through that. So we're facing off against a Story Weaver player. They do have a Morello ticking, but I think we actually sneak this win out. I can't actually tell in a lot of these fights. That's the thing about Fine Vintage. You, you can't really tell what's going on in the fights because there's so many glowy things happening. I, I don't even that much attention to them to be honest but we actually lose i thought we were going to win this one but we actually lose needlessly big gem not enough but we get another item the comp is actually decently weak right now because we don't have the anti-heal and here we get a giga high roll we get unleash arcana you actually don't want accomplice by the way it gives fewer support items and you can't really plan around them just get unleashed arcana get a bunch of item components and just be happy all right what do we have here we have Perfect, Randuins. All right, I like putting my Aegis on the Nico, and then I put Randuins on the Kiana. I don't know why. Some player told me to do this before. He was like top 10 at the time. I honestly don't think it matters who you put it on because uh, it just gives 250 health. If you lose a fight over 250 health, like so be it. Like There's going to be a very low percentage of games where that actually matters. So we're off against a Yone. Actually a pretty tough matchup, I'd say, because it's hard for us to kill him without the anti-heal, as I mentioned before. If you can't tell already, I've been saying anti-heal, anti-heal, anti-heal for the past like 10 minutes. It is that important, but it's also hard to kill Yone because he's kind of like a raid boss and we don't have much single target damage. By the way, we completely lucked out on that little loot orb and we got a Hui, so we could use him to just be a Morello applier with this rod that we have on our bench. We're facing off against a Trick Shot Kaisa, i.e. Last Whisper Giant Slayer, blue buff on Teemo. Actually like a decently solid comp, except he's all one star, so I think we end up sealing this one. We got fortunate with the matchmaking RNG, I'm not going to deny that at all, because had this person had a bunch of two stars or like did their roll down, because uh, they have 30 gold right now, had they rolled to zero or something, they'd be definitely a lot scarier. 
But luckily, we're able to kind of sneak by, even if we lose this one, because maybe we do lose, right? I, I don't even care, you know? It's a one unit loss. We're at 46 health. Once stage five hits, we're going to be winning a lot of rounds. All right. Who do we want here? We want Wukong because he's heavenly. We're second pick. So we're probably not going to see him. If you can't get that, try to deny some legendary. So we'll probably go for the Lissandra. And if we can't do that, we go for the Morello Namicon. So we get a belt here. That's actually kind of a close call. Would you rather have the Wukong? Would you rather deny the legendary from someone else if Wukong gets taken? Or would you always go for the Morello there? I think there's a lot of outs on Raptors, so there's a pretty decent chance we get the Morello anyways, but whatever, we could just get it now. By the way, it's just Black Cleaver there. Those choices kind of suck. None of them were really that great. Black Cleaver isn't horrible, but it's not great because Aurelia, which is going to be the main champion we play later on, already has armor penetration, so it's kind of a waste, but right now it's going to be okay. Hui's pretty decent at holding it, like, hits the entire board, lowers their armor, Puts a healing debuff on them and burns them slowly over time. Like, you can't really complain about that, right? All right, so we are able to actually win our first round in stage four. That is pretty big. I didn't quite see who we face, but we also get to cook up two items now. And this is where the power really comes in. Uh, you could also play Dragon Lord a bunch. That's why I picked the Belisa in. Let's see what we get. Randuin's perfect. Gonna grab that instantly. And then this one... Uh, not the best options. Honestly, all of these suck, but we'll take a Shroud of Stillness. I, I like Shroud because it buys time for our team, because it kind of slows the enemies down and it allows us to get to our needlessly big gem a little bit easier, which I think is going to be one of the late game win cons for our team. Speaking of the late game, just double check the team planner. We want the legendaries there, Wukong, Aurelia, Rakan. Rakan's really good because we get Altruist if we play soraka and also we could get it if we play the riven galio version which we do end up going for this game if you have not noticed yet we're only at three heavenly because we can't find kha'zix uh, some games that happens it's weird i played find vintage maybe four times and every single game i never have kha'zix because I, for some reason i don't find him early on in the game and then i level up it's almost impossible to find him at this point but although he's nice he's not really that necessary other things you could sub into your team are things like sage sage is really good because you get lifesteal uh what else is there dragon lord dragon lord's really good with diana lee sin zaya or like rakan rakan's definitely better uh, do we level up we could probably wait one turn we're at 32 life we're not really in too much of a rush we are a little low like, after the next loss, I'd be getting kind of scared. But I want to make the chances we hit Aurelia as high as possible, so I'm going to greed it out a little bit. Some people may have rolled here, but I'm pretty sure you really, really, really need that Aurelia. Aurelia is so much better than Hui because Aurelia hits everyone with the red buff or Morello. But obviously, like, if you never get Aurelia and you only have Hui, you're going to be more than fine. But I just want to increase my chances for that. All right, let's do the roll down. I'm going to buy the Lee Sin. Level up by the Riven. Maybe we do the Galio version. I guess I told you we already do the Galio version, but uh, Riven's nice because Altruist is good too. A lot of resistances to your team. There's a Wukong. Gonna buy that. Drop him in. I need to take out all these silly behemoths that I kind of ran for most of the game. They're not great, but I guess I put a new one in, but <laughs> they're what I got, you know? All right, so let's just put that there. Let's take out this. I accidentally put two Dianas in, so I spurg the items essentially. But as you can see, there are a lot of things you could kind of play in this build. You don't have to go like full heavenly, even though it's the best. Like obviously try to get as many heavenly in as possible, but if you are missing some, it's okay. Like if you're playing random legendaries, of course that's gonna be just as good, if not better in some cases. Uh, but another thing I love about this comp is that the items don't really matter at all. So it's a super consistent build. You really just need a burn item in your backline and then maybe one other Aurelia item. So you don't even need three items on Aurelia. You just need her to have maybe like one attack damage or attack speed item, either or plus the burn effect. Because I'm a boomer, I need to do another roll down because I only rolled down to 43 gold. I probably should be rolling to like, not zero, but at least like 20 here, I would say. I need to be going a little faster. There's a Riven 2. I don't even know if I want it yet because without Aurelia, it's kind of useless. I probably should have waited to get Aurelia first. But let's roll down. I skip Orn. I think that's a mistake I made here because uh, I'm kind of getting a little dizzy. You know the whole saying, clear your bench, clear your mind. I clearly did not do that. So I'm very crowded right now and that's why I'm rolling so slowly. But that's why it's very important to like, if you can clear your bench if you're going to do a big roll down because I'm holding a lot of stuff that I don't actually care about. 
The random Udyr 2 or Lissandra 2, even if I complete them, they're not even that big of upgrades to my board. Well, I guess Lissandra is, but Udyr's kind of useless without items, and we literally do not have any items for him. We have a bunch of, like, buffs for him, but Udyr's the type of person that needs a few items. So we're facing off against the other fine vintage player here, and... Do we lose this one? This fight looks so close. Yeah, we do end up losing, unfortunately, but we get another item here. So we're actually tied in health with this person. This person got Blinding Speed, which is very similar to the Augment we got in Unleash Arcana. Let's get the Hui here. Hui is going to hopefully get us a 2-star to kind of carry for us, but I, I still prefer the Aurelia. All right, let's complete our roll down, though. We do get the Wukong, too. Honestly, it's not, it's not like that big or anything because he has no items, but it's still nice. Is he's not going to not do anything, you know? Aegis is even bigger, though. So we get the Galio. Let's drop him in, put in the Riven, get some Bruiser. Uh, just drop the ZZ Rot anywhere. Do we get Aurelia? I do get the Aurelia right there. We sell it, buy her, put her in, throw all the items on her, and now we are good to go. Very, very fortunate roll down. Honestly, though, we had a lot of different legendaries we could have hit. Like, it could be Aurelia, it could be a Hui too. Maybe even Lissandra too would have been nice to farm us more items. By the way, I should use my Lesser Duplicator on the Soraka. That definitely is a mistake. I should have used it like a while ago because we don't really need that item in this game. But as you can see already, like, this is why I prefer the Aurelia. She just hits everyone. I, I don't know. And it's like, we're able to kill this Yone, even though typically I think he's kind of difficult to deal with. I do end up making a mistake here. I try to roll to zero just because I was at seven live. I, I don't know why I did because I this board is so stable. It definitely is a mistake to do what I did. Um, but yeah, let's get this Rakan in somehow. I think we sell this Lissandra, drop in Rakan. We get Altruist, which is pretty nice. And then our next in is going to be Diana, which gives us Sage and Dragonlord. By the way, always get your ZZ Rots buffed up by the Randuins and the Aegises. And another thing to keep in mind is you need Rakan in the front line, in the front two rows, because if you put him in the back two rows, it turns into Zaya. We don't like Zaya. And in this build, you need the Altruist. You want Rakan kind of jumping around everywhere, distracting everything. And Zaya just doesn't do much without items. So that's why you kind of want it to work out that way. But we crush this. Like, the game's not even close now. In stage six, it gets even easier. In terms of, like, analysis, you could probably just, like, AFK at this point. Like, I'm rolling for fun, essentially. Uh, again, I probably should have saved my gold. Maybe I could have leveled up and added another unit in. But I panic because I'm a dumb dumb. Also, let's check the item here. Oh, nice. We did get Rakan 2 star, but, like... Honestly, this Rakan's not going to do that much. Giant Slayer Aurelia sounds pretty good to me. Guardbreaker would have been good too. We're going to get this item cooked up. And against this Ink Shadow player, we have Senna 2 star, Morgana with red buff. That's not honestly the most annoying part, but like, I don't even, like, this fight's over, right? I don't even think they killed. We have one, two, three, four, five six units alive and they barely killed the other two so we should pick on someone our own size so let's face off against the other fine vintage player and they have three zz rods we have two and they have aurelia two star as well holy cow with a needlessly big gem also so pretty even matchup but i think because we have two aegises buffing up our team in addition to the three randuins uh, it kind of outweighs the Aurelia 2 star. It outweighs having red buff versus Morello. And we are able to kind of clean this up and get a third place. Even if we lost this one, we'd get fourth, so not the biggest deal. But I guess that's why it's kind of hard for us to find Aurelia. Everyone's playing Aurelia. She is a very good five cost unit, no denying that. We're facing off against the Kaisa board right now. This is probably the most popular comp of this patch. Also with a team of three, so a decent cap out by this player, and they're level nine, so. Actually, like, very solid boards that we're beating, and as you can see, the fights are close, but not really. This is, like, the closest fight, and it's a 4-0. We end up fighting a ghost here, so we'll just skip this fight. You already know what happens. We did level up to level 10, but we just dropped in a Diana. It doesn't do anything. We're against a Kaisa person again. They got a third item on their Teemo. Surely that is enough to help them. No, it is not. Aurelia's just gonna... We're still one-star Aurelia, by the way, but look... Despite getting hit by the Ink Shadow Kaisa and a bunch of random trick shots, she's still alive because she has like infinite resistances. And that's why I love the Aegis Randuin's build. Let's just get a random Wukong item. I think in the late game, Edge of Night beats out on the damage items. Becoming untargetable seems OP in the late game. So, all right, same thing again, but you already know what happens. Aurelia's just gonna clean up. We did hit Aurelia 2 now, by the way, but we were beating this board with a one-star Aurelia already, so... 
no chance ever since i think stage four six or whatever like we probably could have afk'd for the whole game whenever we hit aurelia i forgot when it was but hopefully this helps people like figure out how to actually win with fine vintage because i know a lot of people go eighth with it and you need a good econ portal or encounter get a bunch of random two stars and also do not do the locket plus zeke's build do this aegis randuin's build